Hello and welcome to this edition of our Focusing on the Future series here on CBS News Philadelphia. I'm Wakisha Bailey. We are highlighting some of the young people who are doing remarkable things in our community, as well as the programs that are helping lift them up. Let's get started. Forget Hollywood movies or Oscar winning actors. The next generation of filmmakers are activists. In this week's Focusing on the Future, CBS News Philadelphia reporter Keisha Bailey heads to Villanova, where students have traveled all over the world, highlighting pressing issues through documentaries. We went to Brazil for two weeks in October. We shot a film kind of centered around the theme of cultural preservation. The day I, I feel the peso of my school, you know? Senior and film producer Joe Adams is a communications major at Villanova University. He says the social justice documentary program has been life changing. For me, I'm kind of overseeing the whole process, making sure everything works, setting deadlines, budget, uh, making sure everyone's comfortable. So I tell students it's, it's an experience more than it is a course. Associate Professor Hezekiah Lewis spearheads this two semester course where students create production companies that produce documentaries about important societal issues. These stories have taken students from the streets of Philadelphia to Ghana and Brazil. I try to get them to not to look at these folks as subjects. How would you feel if I, I turned the camera on you and called you a subject? Like Mestri Guga, he's considered a main collaborator. 18 students followed him and several others around their communities, telling their stories that will ultimately turn into two 25-minute documentaries. Our goal is never to go into these countries, make a film, leave, create this documentary, make money from it. That's never our goal. We want to create sustainable initiatives, create sustainable relationships. Our amazing director, okay. editor, Trinity okay. Meg. I was nervous because of the language barrier and also it being my first time directing. I wasn't expecting it to be as spiritual of an experience as it was. Once I realized that it was meant to be a learning process and I kind of leaned into that, I felt a lot better. Trinity Rogers also leaned on the support of editor and cinematographer Meg Martin, who is now working on her second film. I hope that through our imagery, we're able to show kind of nature and your surroundings and your connection to it a little bit differently. Hejani is basically the leader of the Quilombo Kingoma community. She's like a public speaker and advocate for the rights of her land. As these students head into their second semester, Professor Lewis says this year's theme, cultural preservation, is more than a passing grade. But he hopes these stories of these collaborators will continue to touch the hearts of millions. It's lessons that we can learn here in, in the state. So we find universality in these themes and the beauty in these people, and that's how we connect. Now we understand how important it is for us to preserve our culture. On this week's Focusing on the Future, a young singer and songwriter has captured the hearts of millions. And he is just 16 years old, and he is quickly leaving his mark on the stage. CBS News Philadelphia's Wakisha Bailey sh shares why you're going to find this musician hard to forget. Before 16-year-old Nathaniel Barlow sings a note, he closes his eyes and just feels the music. When I'm singing to somebody or for somebody or just to an entire crowd, that's a time for me to welcome you into my world. CBS News Philadelphia anchor Natasha Brown sat in on a jam session with Nathaniel inside the Philadelphia Clough Club of jazz where icons like Charlie Parker, Duke Ellington grace the stage after four decades helping artists to find their voices. Artistic director Lovett Hines says he knew early on Nathaniel was special. And one of my teachers said, Mr. Hines, that's not a record. That's that's little date singing. Someday, I heard a teacher say to me one time, people know within the first three seconds that you've been singing that you can sing. That theory was put to the test at the legendary Apollo Theater in Harlem, New York. I actually came home from school one day and my mom was like, hey, Nate, I applied you for the Apollo. to the next level, Nathaniel Apollo! He's won four times at Apollo Amateur Nights and was invited back to serenade the crowd for its famous holiday show. Y'all love me? Yeah. 
from the age of four, Nathaniel was composing music, singing in the church choir, and perfecting his opera skills. His confidence lies within the support of his family and church community that's been with him on this journey. Nathaniel's mother reminds him and his siblings to be thankful for their gifts. Understand that it's a gift from God, whatever your it is, and then to begin to intentionally hone that through real world experiences. Nathaniel is used to performing in front of large crowds, but doesn't mind a more intimate show. <laughs> As he wrapped up his session at the Clough Club, the future is bright for this rising star. When people walk up to me and say, you know, Nate, what are you gonna do next? I'm so excited for your journey. I say, I'm excited too. Wakisha well, Bailey, CBS News, Philadelphia. A local high school is raising money for its drama club. These performers couldn't just do a bake sale or a car wash, so they did what they do. They performed, of course, in their school's first ever talent show. And in this week's Focusing on the Future, Rakesha Bailey heads to Parkway Center City Middle College for a performance that no one will soon forget. Tonight I'm going to be performing I Have Got a Crush on You. It's not related to anyone. Parkway Center City Middle College held its first ever talent show on December 1st. It's going to be no music, just me and my voice and you. More than 20 students put on 12 acts from singing a cappella to a drum line to spoken poetry. It's crazy because it was the student's idea to put on the talent show. Miss Delaney Reagan is the school's drama teacher. Early in the year, one of them was like, Let's do a fundraiser where we raise money for our spring play. And I think one way we could do that is putting on a talent show. And when they said that, I was like, you're 14 years old. How do you, <laughs> how did this idea of a talent show even come to you? Their goal, $3,000. Students got to work. They created a social media page and posted flyers. 11th grader Gloria Evans stole the show, singing a Disney tune from The Little Mermaid. I just wanted to like bring that type of song into this school, let everybody know that anybody can sing this song, whether you're black, white, whatever race. Did anyone help you prepare for this? No, I just had my mom in the background saying, get it girl, get it girl. <laughs> she drew inspiration from her heavenly angel, her grandfather. He's the one that actually taught me how to sing. My grandfather passed away back in June and he told me that I should always sing happy songs and whatnot. So like I'm making that promise to him that I'm always gonna keep singing. Miss Delaney did more than just help organize the show. She performed as well and surprised her students. <laughs> If you missed this show, by popular demand, students are planning another one. Wakisha Bailey, CBS News, Philadelphia. Thank you for tuning in to CBS News Philadelphia. We will be right back with more inspiring stories from the young members of our community. Welcome back. Returning to our Focusing on the Future special, our next story takes us to a Philadelphia gym where teens and Olympians are fighting their way to the top. Check it out. In this week's Focusing on the Future, local Philadelphia teenagers are fighting their way to the top. CBS Philadelphia reporter Wakisha Bailey heads to Swift Gym where young boxers and Olympians are preparing for a big match. I used to have hard jab movie hit. It's known as a, as a fighting city, hence the term fighting fills, Broad Street bullies. And now young boxers like Nelson are making a name for themselves with the help of coach and trainer Rob Acosta. Sports play a big part of uh, children's lives. You know, they, they need something to do especially when you're coming up in an area that's high in poverty. That inspired Eagles running back DeAndre Swift's father, Darren, to open another door at the family's gym, Swift Fit. God put it on my heart uh, because we have a large boxing community in the city of Philadelphia, but they don't have a lot of places to go. You're going to keep your range. You're going to make, you got to make them pay. Nelson's father rarely misses a practice. This is kind of a sport where it's like you kind of have to love it. You know, you have to take it really serious or, you know, you can get hurt in it. Sometimes where I do get nervous, I do underperform a little bit, but every time I try to get my 110% as soon as I walk in the gym. Nelson also gets to watch and learn from team title boxers and junior Olympians like Team USA boxer Jason Moreno. He has three national titles and he won a silver medal last year at the U.S. Nationals. So that qualified him for the Olympic trials this December. 
and Juan Riviera, a.k.a. Little Johnny or Different Breed. He's um, a 19-time national champion and a two-time international gold medalist. Little Johnny's biggest fan is his dad, former boxer Johnny Rivera. Wow, the sweet science. To be able to hit somebody and not get hit and still hit them again, there's something in that. From Nelson's dad to little Johnny's dad and even DeAndre Swift's dad, Coach Acosta says he hopes these special connections go beyond Swift Gym and into the community. Muhammad Ali wanted to learn how to box because someone stole his bike and the gym was above a police station. So he went in there and look what he turned out to be. A legend. Well, Keisha Bailey, CBS News, Philadelphia. Making the world a better place is the mission for a group of young entrepreneurs. And this week's Focusing on the Future, Wakisha Bailey visits Springside Chestnut Hill Academy, where these young business owners say opening a business is more than just a paycheck. Here's A as a fist, and then here's B as the number four. Hands is a language learning app that is designed for ASL. I found the need to create this oil so that it can encourage love and appreciation for natural hair of black women. Oh wow, that sounds really nice. Our company name is Turtle Tech and we're an AI-powered tech assistant for senior citizens. My grandparents are always asking, how do I sign into Gmail? How do you plug this cord into the TV? Inside Springside Chestnut Hill Academy, one suite is designated as the center for entrepreneurial leadership. Right through here is the uh, maker space. Junior Trey Angle is the owner of Tales Inc. This is comics right now was a uh, dying art form. He has spent the last five months developing his comic book. Our main character here is a Viking who gets indoctrinated to the Viking clan at a young age. That's just one of the many businesses launched from inside Mr. Edward Glossman's entrepreneurial class. I would describe them as creative problem solvers. Mr. Glossman has been developing future leaders at SCH for the past 10 years. Even though we live in a world with a lot of challenges and problems, they can be that change that they want to see and that that change happens locally in their backyard. Sophomore Judah Meyer runs the nonprofit Community Plate. His mission is to address food insecurity. By donating the excess food from our school cafeteria to a local homeless shelter, we've donated around 330 pounds of food that otherwise would have been thrown in the trash, but it was perfectly edible. Sophomore Araya Goswami created an app called Safe Travels for those who take public transportation. It provides real-time reviews on the safety, cleanliness, and punctuality of SEPTA train lines. And sophomore Quentin McDonald has also created an app called Ayudo. Students are expected to have completed anywhere from 50 to 200 service hours over the course of their high school career. You can see your friends volunteering, and like especially for high school students, colleges are actually looking for um, opportunities that are aligned with your interests. But sophomore Ayana's nonprofit was more personal. Hers was born out of her own circumstances. When I was younger, I went through um, pediatric cancer and I'm a survivor. Her business is called the Sweet Dreams Project. And it basically brightens up pediatric patients hospital stays. I had a community that would decorate my own hospital room. And so basically I want to do this to give back. While most go to businesses to make money, these students are more concerned with making a difference. If it's something that you're really passionate and you care about so much, money's not even in the equation. It's really just about making sure you can put a smile on these people's faces. Wakisha Bailey, CBS News, Philadelphia. In this week's Focusing on the Future, aspiring beauticians are redefining beauty standards. Yes, CBS News Philadelphia reporter Makisha Bailey takes us inside Thomas Edison High School, where keeping up with the latest trends could land you an A in class. So this is At the start of the school year, the Thomas Edison High School proudly reopened its beauty at Edison Salon Suite. This week is hair extensions. Hairstylist Veronica Nunez has been teaching cosmetology for more than 20 years. That includes adding hair, braiding without hair. She descends from a long line of beauticians. My mother was stellar at doing updos. My cousin, my male cousin, Louis, yeah. was the Edward Scissorhands of the 80s. Now Nunez is passing that same passion down to her students. It's something about giving my students everything that I have learned, giving back to the community. It's, it's rewarding. So how do you get graded in this class? 
So I normally give the students an MPG form, and that's okay. a mannequin practical guide. And what that consists of is a list of hairstyles that we have gone through in class and how many of them they can complete. The Beauty at Edison is a three-year program, and each student must complete close to 1,300 hours before taking the state board examinations to get their certification in cosmetology. Junior Sanaya hopes to one day make her clients feel special. I just feel like, you know, like you see people, you want to be role models and stuff, and like, I like making people feel like, you know, confident in themselves. Beyond hair, some students are specializing in nail designs and skin care but most are looking forward to one day working in a salon like Nunez. Social media, you know, they portray that you must look a certain way and I think that it's important to instill to our youth that it's just not about what you see. Well, Keisha Bailey, CBS News, Philadelphia. Keep it there. CBS News Philadelphia will be back with more stories focusing on the future. Welcome back. Focusing on the future continues now. A young designer from South Jersey, their one of a kind creations are being seen on some of the most elite runways. In this week's Focusing on the Future report, Wakisha Bailey heads to Pleasantville to find out how one designer is giving new life to something as simple as a blanket. This started out as a blanket. From her mom's cardigan to her dad's sweater, both were made of blankets. Aston Ragsdale thrifted. This is made out of a blanket also. I made this um, crop top style. Uh, like crew neck and I like kind of the elongated sleeve, something that kind of covers the hands. The 22 year old is redefining fashion on her own terms. I want them to feel good in their skin. Like I want them to be able to be like, this was custom made for my body so it looks good on me. At 12 years old, Aston asked for a sewing machine for her birthday. Can you see how dusty it is? I started with teaching myself. I randomly asked for a sewing machine when I was 12, for my 12th birthday, which was really random because I didn't know anything about so I ain't making clothes. I'm glad that we are we were in a position to help her and to give her what she wanted so that way she could be the person that she is because I know she's a star. Aston's mother Lizette Owens knows all too well the time her daughter spends perfecting her craft from sketches to streetwear and even accessories. My first product were clutch bags which is basically a bag without the straps. It was the unique design of her clutch bags that caught the attention of a New York designer where she collaborated on a men's blazer for New York fashion Week. Her clothing has also graced the runways of Atlantic City and Philadelphia Fashion Weeks. And when she's not making couture clothing, Aston is working on a collection to that is all her. I would describe it as like streetwear, but like kind of still based in the past. Like I like the 90s, 2000s type of vibe, but also bringing it into modern day because I, you know, everything pretty much is coming back. With the ward season upon us, Aston dreams to one day see her creations on the red carpet. She has a particular Berks County native in mind. Taylor Swift and the stuff that she wears, so I feel like they always kind of dress her in a way that's perfectly her. Although her clients aren't necessarily going to the Oscars or the Grammys, the prom's red carpet will have to do for now. Getting a dress that's made perfectly for you. Well, Keisha Bailey, CBS News, Philadelphia. Why spend hours at the nail salon when you can have a perfect manicure in a matter of minutes? And this week's Focusing on the Future, CBS Philadelphia's Waukesha Bailey went to Upper Darby, where a young entrepreneur is providing couture press-on nails. I do all types of press-on nails. I can customize any set you want. Meet 18-year-old Sabria Hines. You can send me a set that you were inspired by. She's a nail artist. Tell me your ideas, tell me colors that you like, and I'll work with you and get you some really nice nails. And the owner of Nail Couture by Brie. Before heading to school, she invited us into her family's home while she was finishing up a regular customer, her mom. You always want to start with filing them. This type of nail has been trending a lot. It's a press on nail similar to a French manicure with a lot of texture. My sets start at 25 mm -hmm. and depending on like what you want done. Sabria says this is her busy season. Right before summertime right, and right before like every holiday. And not to mention she's still in high school. Sabria started 
her custom press on nail business during the pandemic. She was then only 15 years old and business has been growing ever since. A lot of girls actually are starting to switch to press ons because they do so much. They model, they do photo shoots, they need different looks. Press on nails are becoming Hollywood's best kept secret. They're easy, interchangeable, and they take minutes to put on and seconds to take off. They can last two weeks to a month. Sabria's nails weren't bedazzled because she works at a vet with animals, her first love. If they had like a little doggy polish, I would every day come yeah. in and work on a dog. But for now, she'll stick to growing Nail Couture by Brie. My mom actually taught me that what you put into your business is what you get out. With Keisha Bailey, CBS News, Philadelphia. October was National Disability Employment Awareness Month. And in this week's Focusing on the Future, Rakesha Bailey heads to Elmwood Park Zoo in Norristown and meets up with Michael, whose abilities go well beyond his contributions on the job. How about it's me, Mike? I'm going to feed your lettuce. Michael Romano says working at the Elmwood Park Zoo in Norristown doesn't feel like a job. I like to do my giraffe job in the, in the nice weather day that I get to be outside more. Before the zoo opened, we joined Michael to find out what he does from day to day. I feed giraffes. Do you like giraffes? I like them. Really? I, I talked to them, Steve. Uh, I, talk, I talked to them about the Eagles Super Bowl. Are you an Eagles fan? I like, no, I like the Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. Elmwood Park Zoo is a certified autism center where inclusivity ranges from the staff to its customers. And that includes being able to have programming where we allow individuals with all sorts of needs to come through the gates and learn, but also have them on the other side and have them be some of our ambassadors. Like Michael, who has now been working at the zoo for five years. I guard a gate, open this gate, and I hold it like this. And then we go in? Then, then you go in. Michael's employment is part of Ken Crest supported employment program for individuals living with disabilities. We're looking to identify a job that would match their individual skills and abilities and along with their interests. It's obvious Michael's job at the zoo and his love for animals is a perfect fit. I tell him have a good day. I tell him come by and feed your ass again. Well, Keisha Bailey, CBS News, Philadelphia. Thank you so much again for joining us for this edition of Focusing on the Future. If you're enjoying this show, download our app on your smart TV, Roku, Apple TV, or streaming device to catch us every weekend. CBS News Philadelphia continues after a short break.